Now go fight for your family. Go fight for the world. I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Zachary, a warm welcome to you and congratulations on Shazam. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, look, I mean, Shazam is the adult superhero alter ego of a teenage boy. So I think when it comes to this role and exploring the character, do you feel that you've actually had to introspect on your younger self in presenting the character in an almost childlike manner? I mean, kind of, but not really. I, I, I'm, I'm just a man child in general, so I'm not really having to work very hard to tap into what I used to be like, because I'm still basically that kid <laughs> inside in some ways. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and also, you know, who I was at 17 is markedly different than who a 17 year old is now, who Billy would be now, you know, very different slang, very different attitudes. I mean, some similarities, 17 year olds are 17 year olds, but it's, it's also quite different, you know? Um, so I was just trying to take my cues from the actual kids, Asher, Jack, the other kids, other kids that are around, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. What do they look like? How do they talk? How do they walk? Uh, what, how, what do they think? And then apply that as best I could to the character. Sure, and I think one thing that I love about your filmography in particular is that there is a very light-hearted film to many, but yeah, not yeah. all yeah, of yeah, your yeah. movies. I mean, be it Tangled, Shazam, Thor, yeah. uh, they all seem to have this really huge appeal with younger audiences. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how subconscious has your decision been in choosing several projects that sort of appeal towards the youth? Well, I would say that they chose me more than I chose them. I mean, only with <laughs> getting Shazam am I finally at a place in my career where I have a little more uh, say in where I go and what I do. Prior to that, you're lucky to get a job, you know what I mean? And so I was very grateful that a lot of the jobs that came my way were things like the, the series Chuck that I did years ago, which was also something that had a lot of heart and an entire family could watch, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know that anything I've done is really for the youth as much as it's something that's for everyone, which includes the youth. You know, we call it four quadrant uh, uh, movie making, right? Shazam is that, uh, Thor is that, a Tangled absolutely is that. Um, and I'm really grateful about that because you, you actually get to reach more people. And, and I know all of the movies that I loved when I was a kid mm -hmm. and all the actors I loved when I was a kid, I'm still fans of theirs, you know? So yes. I love that I get to leave that kind of an imprint. Sure, and I'm glad you just mentioned about the work choosing you. Uh, you know, because I feel like, you know, you've done great work over the years. Thanks. Uh, but I'm sure it has definitely taken a lot of patience and persistence uh, to bag a lead role in a major franchise like Shazam. Uh, so in a tough industry like this, what has kept you motivated to strive and succeed? Well, therapy. Uh, <laughs> therapy, yeah. I need it too. <laughs> yeah, we, we all do. We all do. Everybody needs a little therapy, you know. Uh, uh, mental health is like dental health. Everybody, everybody needs to brush and floss. You do. Sure. And therapy is a great way to get some really good brushing and flossing in that mind of yours. And listen, I was always very driven to be the actor that I am today. And that was for myriad reasons. Some of those were unhealed traumas as a child. Shocker. Oh. But, you know, yeah. but that happens. That's part yeah. of life. I love entertaining people. I will continue to do this as long as I can. I love that I can use the platform that I'm given with this career I've been given and try to speak as much truth and love and joy and wisdom into the world as I can. And uh, I love that I've been able to have people help me to love myself more and understand myself more so that I can do it more effectively. Right, and I think what I love about you, Zach, again, is the energy you bring. Every time I hear you speak, every time I even see your interviews, forget, I mean, your performance is alone, of course, Thanks. but where is that source of energy? Where does that energy come from, do you think, in your life? I, I mean, not to get too woo-woo or whatever, but I think it's God. I mean, I, I think, Amazing. you know, yeah. God, source energy, the universe, a lot of people call it a lot of different things, and I'm not trying to tell them what to call it, but... That, to me, that's God. That, there is something that's intrinsic, like the force in Star Wars that is in and through all things. And I think that ever since I was a little kid, I've been able to tap into the force 
and and try and I've really always felt compelled to make the world a better place. And maybe that's because I romanticize all these incredible heroes and all these incredible movies. But I think that there's something that's real about that. I think that deep down we all want truth and justice. We all want there to be you know true equality. We all want these things deep down. And uh, so that's what drives me, man. I just want it. Wow, that's wonderful. But I think on that note, it was such a pleasure to have you, Zach. Thank you so much for joining me on Film Me Show Me and congratulations on the Shazam once again. Thank you so much. So, David, um, yes. it's fascinating how your earlier feature films are of the horror genre. Mm -hmm. And I love the little plug-in of, uh, the little Easter egg of Annabelle in Shazam. Yeah. She was in the first one, so she had to be in this one. Yeah, well. of course, exactly. Um, so this has obviously been your ticket to the DC universe. Um, so it's obviously a complete paradigm shift. What has contributed towards this difference in styles of cinema? It's, it's quite a difference. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, I, I like all kinds of movies. I like horror is very close to me, but I like all kinds of movies. So it was a dream come true to get to do this type of movie as well with action and everything. But I can't stay away from horror completely. That's why it's like they have some horror elements as well. Like in the first movie, we have like the boardroom and we have my wife turning to ash and things like that. Uh, and in this one, we get to do, you know, we have these monsters coming into Philadelphia and actually get to have some pretty scary monster mayhem, you know? Sure. Where did this tryst with horrors begin from, do you think, actually? And how do you think it's really transpired, I think, for you in your career? A pretty early age. I mean, I, I loved, I saw Jaws at a, <laughs> at a too early age. And, and even like Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, you have like faces melting yeah. and things like that. And that, learned, uh, you know, turned into a love of, of that kind of stuff and into like, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street and things like that. I, I, I'm not sure like why I like it so much, but it's been there for a very long time. Right. And again, I think what I'm very fascinated by is you've made collective no budget shorts, which is so remarkable. And I think if we look at it now, right now is the current era of grassroots filmmaking. Yeah. And such is best as well. So what inspires and I think just an extension of my last question, what inspires and influences your storytelling? All kinds of things. I mean, it, other movies and like comic books, video games to some extent and like just all, all the things I love in, in a big mishmash together, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, certainly for for things like Shazam, it's a lot of uh, other superhero movies. Like I, I love Sam Raimi's work with like Spider-Man. And, you know, I grew up with like, you know, Tim Burton's Batman and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think now that you're obviously making films on a major scale, I mean, how do you balance your vision as a creative, as well as the requirements of what the producers or the studios yeah. require of you? No, I mean, it's it's been fairly easy, I think, because it's the, you know, you have to make sure that you and the studio are on the same page and sort of share the same vision. Um, because as long as you do that, it's, you know, it's, it's all good. The, 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 the tricky thing is like when you have completely different opinions and then no one's happy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I've been pretty lucky with the, the studio sort of mm -hmm. being on the same page. And I think even again, whether it's horror or superhero films, you have to really make sure you work well on the VFX side of things as well. Yeah. So what have been the greatest learnings for you, I think, whilst working on these technical aspects? Yeah, I mean, visual effects on a movie like this is interesting because you can do almost anything. You, you know, you can create entire shots from, from scratch because um, it's you know you get to <laughs> thankfully work with some of the best VFX houses in the business um, no I mean it, it's challenging because it takes so long mm -hmm. such a long time uh, so you have to put trust in it I guess because you won't see the, the finished film until like months and months later right right that's really wonderful. But look, I mean, I'm looking forward to, uh, to see what people have to say about Shazam Fury of the Gods. So do I. Sure <laughs> it's going to be very fascinating to see, and I'm sure everyone's going to definitely enjoy it once again. Yeah, I so. hope so. Lovely. Well, thank you so much. It's thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Great so, you. Diamond, I think it's so good to see you back as the wizard in oh, Shazam. Oh, thank you. Thank but you. I think your role is perhaps the trickiest because it requires wisdom yet humor. Yes. So what helped you to keep both these aspects in check as an actor? Uh, let's not forget uh, to give credit credit where it is due. Uh, credit is um, 
absolutely uh, thankful for the writer to um, and uh, for the DC universe to somewhat uh, um, bring bringing me back and certainly in reinserting me to uh, into the fury of gods uh, was quite beautifully done I must say um, it's a it seemed ambiguous uh, as to how I was left from the first one but of course I, I was giving a power to a champion who was a teenager and so the uncertainty of that kept me you know in the rock of eternity for some time until they uh, sort of like uh, mistakenly handled that and uh, so I had to come back and retrieve the power. Right. I mean what I love about you as well is that you have this uh, intensity even if it is in humor or a role like Blood Diamond which I think is my personal favorite of yours mm -hmm. you have this intensity in you where does that intensity come from as an actor? Um... We are all instruments of interpretation. And that interpretation and some of, some of that residue uh, is your makeup. And um, I'm guessing that uh, a bit of it comes from the way I was brought up myself and the, you know some of the challenges that I had to overcome in life. Mm -hmm. Right. So that mold you into that, possibly. And I feel also, Jaiman, vulnerability is so important, I feel, Extremely for any important. artist. Um, Extremely important. Yes. Again, when it comes to vulnerability, uh, what helps you to be vulnerable? And I know for a film like Shazam, you know, it's, it would be wonderful to know actually how vulnerability comes into play here, because obviously it's a very different, it's not an intense role per mm -hmm. se. No, no. Um, but I, it's important to keep the organic nature of the uh, of uh, your character or your the character you're playing. Uh, it's important to keep it organic. And if you keep it organic, I think the vulnerability will come through. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm not sure, but I that's right. my take on it. But uh, yeah. again. Um, uh, from Blood Diamond to Fear of Gods, uh, it's quite, uh, you know, journey. quite a journey, and it's a night and day in sure. a way. Mm -hmm. But uh, the investments mm -hmm. uh, are still the same. I think the superhero franchises. I mean, be it, you know, I think obviously Black Panther, Shazam. Uh, I think representation, I think, is improving. Um, mm -hmm. I think just generally, if we talk about the BAME representations of cinema, it's come yeah. a long way. Yes. But <laughs> I think there is plenty of room for improvement. Oh, so seriously. I mean, <laughs> and there's still so much room to, for improvement. I agree know. with you. Totally. So much more, you know. Yeah. I was going to literally ask, actually, what do you think can actually be done to improve this? Uh, <laughs> uh you know, I mean, we're at a uh, junction or at a time and uh, in a space of uh, called the diversity. And um, the need for diversity, and certainly in s places like here, um, and in some other places, it's not quite yet. You know, it's not quite yet. and um, But... Um, we hope that uh, society and certain uh, corporations still view us as human beings. Exactly. Um, and I think simply is that, I think, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's simply that, I'm not sure yet, but uh, <laughs> That's a that's a heavy load of question. That it's I, have a to, very I have to think I have to think about it for quite a bit. You know, sure. so it's it's difficult to spontaneously uh, yes. answer that. But uh, I, yeah. Hopefully, at the next press junket or the next interview, <laughs> we can finish this off. For you sure. know, and uh, with yeah. time, I think uh, it, it would um, it would assert itself yeah. in time. It would sort of define itself. I think. Sure. 
Well, look, Diamond, Time was, heals, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, it's been such a pleasure to have you. Um, thank you so much for joining me on Film Machine. I'm wishing you all the very best for Shazam. Much appreciated. Right, so, Asha and Jack. Uh, yeah. You know, every kid growing up aspires or dreams of being a superhero. Um, so have you both always wished of being one? And how do you think Shazam has helped you in fulfilling that wish? Mm. Superhero. You? Yeah, I mean, growing up, I always... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know, just funny because you are. <laughs> superhero? You? This guy? <laughs> this guy? Oh, I don't see. think so. Oh, this guy? No. I could not see this guy being No, but seriously, we're not superhero. Right. I'm just kidding. Oh, um, you're a mess. I know, I... Oh, sorry. She broke up. Another break. story. Anyway, uh, no, it's so... I, I grew up always wanting to be a, a part of the superhero franchise of, of some caliber um, and, and just to be a superhero. Like, I grew up idolizing Superman and always wanted to... You know, I was dressing up for Superman on Halloween and running around with a little cape and my little diaper when I was little. Uh, you know, I love <laughs> Dark Superman. Storm in I, diaper. Yeah. <laughs> Use my superpowers. So, no, it's it's so fulfilling and it, it's wish fulfillment. It's it's everything I could ever dream for and, and more. So I'm just, I'm very thankful that we uh, we get to be a part of this. Right. Now, we live at a time when we need superheroes to save us from yeah. everything and anything. Nice. Um, so if you were granted special strengths, in what way would you use those powers to help the world? I wouldn't necessarily use real superpowers. I think my su my superpower would be spreading kindness, which I, this is that my... That is a real superpower. Yeah, spreading kindness, spreading love and, mm -hmm. and positivity. That's kind of my superhero power i feel like in the real world but um if i'm going a different route i'd say uh, uh flight or electricity manipulation mm -hmm. or invisibility i don't know what do you think it'd be great to like reset the earth if that could be a good <laughs> yeah you know that'd be I a agree. good that'd be a good superpower i was just thinking that Shit like if i could just be like they're like oh my god the earth is gonna explode in six years i just be like watch this pew neanderthals Shazam. Like, dinosaurs <laughs> and i'm like oh we'll get rid of we'll like figure Thanos? out the dinosaur situation but Earth is clean. Earth is happy right now. Thanos, you know, snap the fingers. Yeah. And you know what I love about, like, your characters speci specifically is, again, the superheroes are the alter egos of, of them as kids. And I think that is something which is quite fascinating because, obviously, the, their lives are quite, I mean, they're quite, you know, bogged by down the ordinary lives that we, you and I both live. So when it comes to dealing with that mundaneness, I mean, if you could, um, if you had a chance to also, again, don an avatar, um, mm. you know, what, I mean, what, what helps you to keep you engaged in life that's away from the mundaneness of life? Christ. Christ. Excellent question. That is an excellent question. Can I take it? You got it. Yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what helps? I play music. Um, I love, I, play mu I love to play music. I, I love to skate. Um, I think I just I just moved to a place where there's a lot more nature, and I find that in nature I'm I'm really inspired, and to to be able to write or think clearly from a, like a place of foundation that's that's like grounding is really really helpful. That's mm. my solace in that place. If I'm not acting, then I'm in nature. If I'm in right. nature, I love it. Looking for mushrooms and frogs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, and I think, again, your journeys have been uh, really inspiring to so many people. Um, I think it's wonderful to see the trajectory that you all have had mm. as actors. And obviously you began at a very young age. And now I think when you have been doing part of some great work as well, like Shazam, um, how do you perceive the industry and your craft as actors? What does acting mean to you? I think acting is the biggest escape for me um and i feel like if, if i'm not doing it i don't feel like myself like i feel like it's the only place i really belong um and it just makes me happy i think i think i think doing this and, and putting time into the craft and perfecting the craft and and i think the biggest thing is making work that can connect with others out there and you know, people going to the movie theaters or, or watching a show or watching a movie and saying, wow, like, this person's totally like me in my daily life. So mm. I think I think making stuff that really can connect with the people in, in the world out there and, and kids and, and teenagers and adults, I think, is, is also um, what really motivates me and, and drives me. Right. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What does acting mean to me? Uh, freedom. Liberation. Freedom to self-express. Um, 
yeah, being able to explore myself, my capabilities, my, you know, I don't know. I, it's also the most ex exceptional learning experience I have, too. I right. learned so much about myself and, and about other people through sure. it. All right. Well, Ash and Jack, thank you for joining me on Film Me Show Me. It was thank great you. to chat with you. Thank you. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here.